we can ignore the rig here. I'm going to actually just delete it. It's some old material. I'll show you how to get that back. There's two ways actually. But first let me example the problem and then the solution. And I'll use two different retargeting methods here just for educational purposes. And that's the only reason to show that they both do the same thing in regard to custom rigs. So the first um, the first retargeter is the retarget motion retargeter with the glue option on and I click action. Now this is already bone mapped and if you don't know what that means you'll have to check out another video and it needs to be in order to generate a usable retargeting structure. Now you'll see that the bones follow along with the animation of this character. I'm going to export this animation and then I'm going to export the character. I'm going to reset the stage to get rid of that rig. You don't want the still data hanging around. But there is a different retargeter that doesn't require that. It's the snap to map retargeter, where after the export you can just delete the rig. It can be, <laughs> I don't know why it keeps doing that, it can be more convenient for you. Now I'm going to um, select all of the items here to export my character and I'm going to use the export mapped mesh type instead of converting this. Now I have my exported mesh and my animation. Let's go to Second Life and put them together. I'm going to create an anchor for my animesh because then I'll be able to directly click on it. You can't directly click on Active Animesh. You can right click and choose Touch uh, if the script supports it. Now, this script comes with Bento Buddy in various forms. I'm going to use the simplest one where you just click and animation continues to run if it's in a loop. And then I'll upload my animation and drop it right in there with it. And grab the mesh. Now, I'm expecting there to be an error here visually. So just right away I'll go over to uh, I don't see an error in the upload window. Alright, so you can see that this is goofy. It's not doing what's what the intended animation is supposed to do. And we can see that right in here. It's supposed to be wiggling that way. Now I'll show how to fix that. Now first what I want to do is um, make this a little transparent so we can see what the legs are doing. Blank. And I'll just give this my usual blue color so I can see it against white if I need to. Now you can see that you can see it a little bit. Now the legs are moving fine, it seems. Maybe. The arms are not. Let's fix that. I'll need to um, create what's known as a reference frame. And the reason why we need that is because the the initial pose does not match the in front the rest pose of the item uh, the rig so if you go into edit mode you'll see that the initial pose 
is different than the rest pose and we need to tell Vento Buddy that that's happening. So what I'll do is go into pose mode. I'm going to A to select all the bones and then A to select all the keys and I'm going to move them over by uh, maybe one key or two keys and I'll put my reference frame on frame one. Uh, and now I need to reset the bones in order to do that so they match what's in the rest pose. So I do Alt R and if I knew that this had translations applied I would do Alt G it as well but I know it doesn't but I did it anyway. And if it does have translations then you'll need location and rotation but I know it's only rotation so I'll use a rotation key and insert that there. Now from frame 1 to 2 it goes into its initial pose and that's where we'll export the animation from the initial pose onto what we moved over here so we'll need to put this up to frame 42 and I will just go into my animation uh, my character tools I am in bone control I'm going to say um, uh, send to anim this is usually disabled send to animation that will send the, the uh, effective frames to the animation tool and I'll snap the bones go to my animation tool I have to do a little bit more work here because I don't want frame 0 I don't want frame 1 I want it to start on frame 2 because you don't have to include the a reference frame in your animation and I want to test it in a loop so I'll do the same thing for the loop and then I can export that right, let's go check our work now once you change the animation in an animesh you need to clear its cache. In order to do that you make a copy. It's the quickest way to do this. Uh, shift, click, drag. The copy is left behind so delete the one that's selected and then we can just click this again. And Now we have our walk animation represents what's happening inside Blender.